Global Center in Kansas City, Missouri. I hear tickets just went on sale Friday, Tony. So there you go. Well, there'll be a lot more matches like that. I mean, that's going to be uh, uh, just if you like right what you, now, right? If you like what you just saw, book your airfare in your room in Tulsa right now. 157, we'll see Teague Travis, number 20 in the country, out of Stillwater, Oklahoma, against Alex Hornfeck, who goes for West Virginia, out of Mars, Pennsylvania. He's a fifth year. Hornfeck and Caleb Dowling the last few years for West Virginia have kind of swapped that 157 spot back. Dowling not going today. Hornfeck is. He's 5-4 and four this season, 58-55 in his career. Travis 14-1 and one this season and 6-0 and oh in duels. And giving us about 30 seconds here to catch our breath after a couple pretty intense bouts at 141 and 149. Those were uh, those were outstanding matches. They were great college matches that, that were com competed all the way down to the last second. I mean, worth the price of admission or whatever you paid for ESPN Plus. <laughs> whether you're watching at the Coliseum or whether you're watching at home. And yeah. some people here at the Coliseum are literally only about three to four <laughs> feet away from the mat. <laughs> they are. They have had some of those scrambles come right into their lap. Use your hot dog in one hand, your drink in the other, and the wrestler in your lap. Or in fact, tries to bring Travis to the ground. Travis got marquee win of his career last weekend against number fifth, number five ranked wrestler from NC State. His first top five win. Well, that's obviously key in them being able to beat NC State, right? Because NC State is definitely looking at points there. A minimum of a, of a six-point swing in the match. Yeah, 2024 has been kind to Oklahoma State. They, with the win Friday against Pitt as a team, have now won four straight road duels. That's their fourth ranked win of the season. They're looking for number five in both of those categories here at the WVU Coliseum today. John Smith was talking a lot about the importance of the duel and how that is a big tool in bringing fans to wrestling. He said, that's what I watched when I was a kid. I, I didn't go to nationals. I went to duels as a kid. Well, it's true that not many people were able to go to nationals. At least now it's on TV. But being in, in, the, in the facility watching something is definitely different than, than when you're watching it, whether that's streaming or on TV. So, And a nice crowd here, as you said, a lot of close to the action. A lot of these young people are getting hooked on the sport by what they're seeing today. Well, it, this is some good stuff right here. That's a nice shot, like a high crotch, the, an inside single high crotch, and turns it into a single, goes to the outside. Or in fact, tries to get the leg free. Well, uh, they got that sort of shin whizzer. He's got the whizzer in, and you see... Uh, Swinging to Mr. Travis, the second leg. Gets him to the knee the second time, and, and runs out of time. Period. So that's some nice defense, right? That nice defense by, by Hornfeck. Here he has got Travis in a good single leg. He's got him up in the air pretty good. Hornfeck is tall, which can create some problems with trying to trip. And uh, time runs out. 0-0 zero, zero going into the second period. Certainly changes center of gravity, changes leverage. Where you can sweep that leg. Well, yeah, you, you think things are in a place, and then they're not. Right. <laughs> If your math teacher figured that one out. We teach you geometry and physics all at once. All at time. once, right? Exactly. Still looking for our first points of what was a, a slow starting bout between Hornfeck and Travis, but business starting to pick up. Well, Hornfeck is a kind of cross body ride, really trying to rip the shoulder back, bring the arm back so that he can. Travis Bar it. slowly but surely trying to get to his feet. A setback as Hornfeck leans in on his back. He's trying to get the hand, uh, the arm up on his back if he can, right? He's trying to use that arm as a as lever. lever. Yep. And we're going to get called a stalemate, apparently. A lot of weight on Hornfeck's left shoulder there, Tony. Or on, or on uh, Travis's left shoulder from Hornfeck. Yeah, that's... That's the whole idea of being on top. I mean, guys right. just don't roll over for you. I mean, they may be nice, but they don't really do that. that see, that time you saw Hornfeck tried to step around the corner, and Travis sort of stepped back, caught the leg as it was coming in, and did a nice, almost a, a little bit of a, like a little switch motion, 
gets himself a reversal. As you saw, Hornfeck's minute of riding time has melted below that. And the reversal puts Travis up 2 nothing. Well, and now it's Hornfeck's job to get out. So now we're at 2-1. And the escape for Alex Hornfeck. So 2-1, final 30 seconds in the second period. So the challenge with being taller is it's hard to stay down in position. Right. Uh, at, the other, at the same time, uh, the challenge when you're wrestling somebody as taller is you... you they can reach places you can't. Yes, exactly. So and Both these guys trying to figure out how to use their respective heights to their advantage in this one, and they'll have to carry that into the third period. And we got a doozy coming up at 165, Peyton Hall and Isaac Olenek. We talked about that one in the Open today. Hall will see three of the top five wrestlers in the country here in the next three weeks. Olenek unbeaten at 16-0. Well, you know what? He wins some of those, and he's a top five guy in the country. That's the way it goes. Yeah. And that's why you come to wrestle. I, you, you go to compete, and you want to be in those in that position. 165 is not a class for the weak of heart. Well, especially in the Big 12, right? I mean, certainly none of them are... I wouldn't call any of the weight classes easy. No, no, <laughs> right? no. But in the Big 12, 165 is, is definitely a bit of a gauntlet. What's Hornfeck got to do to turn this around? Well, the thing is, you know, it's only two to one. He gets an escape and the score is tied. And right now, riding time is down to zero, basically. He's up to his feet. There is the escape. There's a minute 15 left in the match. So a takedown, takedown wins more than likely, right? especially if anybody can spend some time on top. Hornfeck, nice, nice shot. shot for Hornfeck. He's got the single, looking for the double. He's got to drive through it, but Travis does a nice job of grabbing the ankle and gaining some leverage coming back. Hornfeck uh, is now getting stretched out. Under a minute to go, and yeah, that's causing Hornfeck to lose his grip. Right, you see Travis trying to push away, push away to create some bit different, some space, and that's, and is able to, get himself back to a neutral position and then takes a shot right there in the corner. Hornfeck is stepping a little too hard on that front leg and, and Travis goes right at it. You like the aggressiveness for Hornfeck there to take that shot after the escape. There's a takedown. Well, I, yes, I mean, it was a great shot, but he's got to drive through it and finish it and he sort of let Travis catch his hip a little bit and, and push back into him and it cost him a takedown. Probably might cost, cost him the match. Probably cost him the match. Right, with 10, 10 seconds, seconds left. left. Right. So aggressive for Alex Hornfeck after getting the escape point to tie it up. But a misfire and number 20, Teague Travis escapes with the second win of the weekend. It was a major decision on Friday against Pitt. And he fights off a very pesky Alex Hornfeck who proved to be a very game fill-in for Caleb Dowling at 157 today.